In this video, we're going to learn how to drag and, and, and drop in your Xamarin Forms application. First, let's have a look at the end result of the video that we're about to see. Um, here we have our title, which is the drag and drop sample. And whenever you click and hold, or well, tap and hold, if you're doing this on a real device, um, you see that you can drag this around. Um, and whenever you do, you also have this little drop zone and you can see by the little plus that's showing up uh, that you can drop it here. And whenever we do, you can see the text is now transported onto this frame that you can see here. Um, that is the sample that we're going to implement. So let's have a look at how to do it. So let's see how to implement all that goodness into your own app. Um, so here you can see a final new Xamarin Forms application running in Visual Studio for Mac 2019. On the left, you can see the example page. On the right, you can see it running in the iOS simulator. Now, I got the question the other day in my Discord server, like why am I not showing more stuff with like the MVVM pattern, uh, which is something that I love to do. So please let me know in the comments if that's something that you want or need. Um, but what I want to do is focus on the feature that I'm explaining and not distract you with, you know, MVVM magic and that the line gets blurred between am I looking at something that has to do with MVVM or drag and drop or whatever I'm explaining at the time. Um, so, but you know, I'm open to everything. So let me know in the comments if there is something specific that you want to see for MVVM. So maybe the MVVM concept um, um, abstracted from the thing that I'm explaining or more samples with MVVM in it. I'd like to hear from you what you prefer. Um, okay, so back to the drag and drop stuff right here. Um, label, of course, here, the top one. Let's make this drag and, oop, it's not gonna work actually. Amp, here we go, we need to encode this. Drag and drop sample, there we go. And when I save that with hot reload, it will update automatically on the right in my simulator. Also works on physical devices. Um, so that's pretty cool. So if you're wondering what kind of magic this is, um, because this is like, you know, a, a XML, um, dialect, you will have to encode these kinds of special characters. Um, so whenever you want to do an ampersand here, you need to do the an amp um, thing right here. So that we taken care of, pro tip right here. You've seen it here at Gerald Tuslow's, his channel. Um, now for the actual drag and drop stuff. So why not, let, let, let's just drag this label right here. So what I'm gonna do is not make this self-closing anymore. I'm gonna close this label like this. Um, and it's just a another um, um, gesture recognizer. What we want to do is say gesture recognizers right here. And we will now here have a drag gesture recognizer, just like you had maybe the, uh, what is it, the, the, the tab. Um, that's one that's, that's used a lot or maybe the, uh, what is it, the swipe one where you can detect swipe um, gestures, uh, but you now also have the drag gesture recognizer. And it has a couple of things. One notable is the can drag that we have right here. And with this, you can set um, if this element can be dragged right now. So maybe you have some kind of state in your application where you cannot drag a certain element at a certain time. This is a bindable property, um, speaking of MPVM. Um, but you know, so can drag, it can be false and then the, the drag gesture recognizer will not fire. But whenever we set it to true, you can just set it in code as well, of course. We set it to true, then we say like, hey, this element can be dragged. Um, so let's do that. And then of course we have a couple of um, um, commands or um, events. So you can do this with MVVM, without MVVM. That's the difference between the events and the commands. I'm gonna do this with the events today. And you can say drag starting and you can you know enrich the data that's going to be dragged basically. We'll see that in a little bit. Um, so let's do this. Let's create a new event handler. We'll see that uh, in a little bit. And let's close this thing right here. And whenever I do and I save this with hot reload, it will update again. Um, and this will not work because we made a code change, but you can probably see the drag and drop here happening already. So whenever you, um, in this case, click, so whenever you tap and hold, you can, you can, you take the element out of it basically and you start dragging it. Now in this case, it's kind of weird because it's white uh, text against a white background. Um, I don't know, when you start dragging it, it gets this kind of white background. Maybe you can influence that some way. But if we make the text black right here, then you can see that it shows a little bit nicer. Um, so whenever I drag it now, you can see I'm actually dragging this, this label thing right here. So this looks a little bit better. Um, 
So actually, let's let's keep it at black. That's that's more clear. Um, so now, but now we need a area where we can drop this actual thing, right? So um, let's let's take out all these labels right here, and I'm gonna gonna add a frame because a frame shows up always nicely with a little bit of shadow. Let's add a margin so um, it, it, it's more clear. So here we have a frame that's our gonna be our drop zone, um, and let's make this not self closing. So make this frame. There we go. And here, the same as the drag, we also have frame dot drop. Uh, sorry, first the gesture recognizers. There we go, and then we have the drop gesture recognizer. So here we can say, hey, this area is suitable for dropping stuff. Um, and here we also have, uh, is it drop? Oh, allow drop. So um, with with the drag, it's can drag, and with the drop, it's allow drop. And that's basically the same thing that I mentioned earlier. Like, hey, do you want to allow the drop at this time? Yes or no? Can this area receive um, this this drop action? Um, so again, this is a bindable property. Um, you can set this in code depending on some some logic that you might have. But I'm going to set it to you know just true for now to see what it's all about. And then we have the same kind of the same as the drag one. Uh, we have commands and we have the drop event um, where we um, can make use of. Now there's a lot, I see a lot of other APIs here coming by. Um, there's a lot of other stuff that you can do. If there's anything specific that you want to see, let me know in the comments and I'll see if I can make a video for that or check out the documentation. The link is down in the video description, of course. Um, so go check that out. Uh, I'm just here to get you started. So let's create this event handler too. Um, save that, but we're not gonna see anything. So, but what this does is um, it will show us that we can actually drop it here. You can see a little icon going on. I think you can influence that behavior too. Um, and we can drop it and then nothing happens right now because that's the stuff that we are going to implement next. Um, so if we go into our little event handlers here, uh, we got the drag one and the drop one. So um, let's let's input some code here. And here we have actually the drag starting event arcs. Those are, and the drop event arcs, those are kind of interesting. Um, so what you can do is um, we can cast kind of the sender. So the sender is going to be the drag gesture recognizer or the drop gesture recognizer. Um, but through there, we can navigate through the visual tree and look at the thing that's actually triggering this. So in this case, it's a label, right? Because on the label, we have the, the drag thing going on. Um, so let's see if we can get the label out of here is um, sender as element and then that's going to be dot parent because the element is going to be our drag gesture recognizer and then the parent is going to be the label um, and that one as label so by doing this with as it's going to be um, null if if something doesn't cast right here i think technically we should have this one in here so that it doesn't blow up if that um, results to null. And then when we do, we can say E, so E is the drag starting event arcs. We can say cancel, so we can cancel it from here. Uh, we can uh, enter some data in there, so that's the thing that we're going to look at, and we can say handled yes or no to let the system know if we handled the thing correctly. I think if you do not set that and um, you know this, this code completes correctly, then the handled gets set to true automatically. Uh, but here we have the data, and with the data we can set an actual image. Uh, we can set an image source in here. We can set properties that we define ourselves. We can set the text that's just for you know easy reference, or we can set a view, uh, which is probably the, the, the view um, that, that's associated to all of this. So go again, go check out the documentation if this is something that you're really going to dive into. Um, I'm going to show this with the properties, and this is just a um, key uh, key value dictionary kind of thing. So I can just add a key with um, text and this can be the, well, actually this can be the label dot text. There we go. Um, now I'm doing this with a label and putting that in this properties dictionary. That is actually not necessary as we'll see in a little bit. Um, but just to show you that you can transport any kind of data with this or images or do whatever. Um, so now that we have this set up, let's go to our drop gesture recognizer. And um, what we can do here is get our um, um, actual data that we are setting here. So let's get the data is E dot. And here we have again, like the handle. So let the system know if we handled it yes or no. And that same data um, um, 
object that we can see here again. And this has the same thing, but well, not exactly because it's, it's a kind of a different object because we can get the image, we can get the text. Um, and we have the properties right here. So this is the property bag basically um, where we can get with a key um, the text. So let's, let's just do that. Uh, we should be able to do this. So let's see what that gets us. Uh, but the other thing it does, again, this is in the documentation, um, depending on what kind of um, control visual element you implement the drag gesture recognizer. So in this case, it's in case of a label, um, it's going to automatically transport the text property into um, kind of like the e.data.getText. Um, it automatically does that for you. So we, we don't even need to do all of this, basically. Whenever we start dragging a label, it will automatically put the text into this um, get text async right here. So, you know, that's that's cool. That's convenient. And the same thing probably for an image. It will go into the get image. And there's another couple of controls that will automatically map some of their properties into um, this object for your convenience so you don't have to do all that work manually. So that's pretty cool. Now let's go into our frame. Um, let's let's forget this for a little bit. Whoops. Let's get our frame actually. I'm gonna put this in a var2 frame is again sender. Um, so sender is in this case our drop gesture recognizer. Uh, we're going to say sender as element. So kind of the same pattern as above uh, dot parent as frame. So here we have our frame that we want to do something in. Um, let's enable this again. Um, and this one too. And if we do this, now I can say frame dot, uh, well, actually it has content, so I can add content to it, is new label. Um, and let's just do it like this. Um, let's add the um, new label. Yeah, so I need to do the text here. And this is going to be data. Is this going to be string? No, okay, so let's, oh, I need to get the value here. No, let's just do the two string. This is getting the value and I'm gonna do two string. And I don't need the semicolon here. So what this does is here, whenever we start dragging it, it gets the label, puts the text into this property bag. And from here, we're getting that same text. In that frame that we have here, we're going to add a label um, and it's going to show the text that we just you know, dragged in there. So that's that's what's going to happen here. Now, again, this isn't technically necessary. Xamarin Forms does that for you, but just to get the point across, all right? So let's stop this and let's start it again. Um, and let's see if that gets us anything. So the app is going to come back up. Um, I need to stop and start running because .NET Hot Reload, I have a video on that, is not available for Xamarin yet. It's coming in .NET 6, but it's not there yet. So for these code changes, I need to stop and start running again. Um, and here you can see I can drag it. I can drop it here. And whenever I do, boom, we see the text appearing here because that is what we do here. Um, so this is this is how you implement the basics of drag and drop. Now you can do this for all kinds of things, of course. Um, I will link down in the video description also a blog post that shows you how to rearrange things in the collection view, which is pretty cool. Um, I in the the sample app that uh, David Ortnow has used um, with um, El Elgato, I think he he may, named it. Um, he's doing something with dragging products into a basket. So you you know you can just have this web shop and you drag products into the basket. So, you know, you can do all types of things with this uh, because you can enrich this with all these properties. So that is really cool. But this is how you implement it with the With basics. the implementation of the drag and the drop gesture recognizer, it's now easier than ever to implement drag and drop into your own application. Um, I hope this teaches you the basics, how to get started with it yourself. I can repeat it as many times um, as, as possible. Whenever you want to see something, please let me know in the comments or join my Discord server and connect to me directly um, with questions that you might have and others can jump in um, or in the comments down below if you want to see another video that I can make, make for you maybe. Um, other than that, just like this video if you've actually liked the content that you're seeing and maybe, maybe you're now coming to the realization that you have not subscribed to this wonderful channel yet, then in that case, please do. Um, you can do so by clicking some somewhere down, down here, I think. There's my little icon, you can subscribe from that, so please do that. And other than that, I'll be seeing you for my next video. Keep coding.